This video is intended to give you a crash course in covariance and correlation to give you just enough to do portfolio math in a basic investments course. So the first thing we need to know about covariance is intuitively what it's trying to capture. So the covariance of um, is trying to capture how two variables relate to each other. That is how they covary. For a positive covariance, when x is positive, y will also be positive. Or y will be positive on average. A negative covariance is the exact opposite of that. On average, when x is positive, y is going to be negative. So when x is negative, y is more likely to be positive. So that's intuitively what covariance is trying to measure. So just to, to rehash, this is a positive covariance. And this is a negative covariance. Mathematically, the way we calculate covariance between two variables is along the lines of this formula. n is the total number of data points you have, and i is a placeholder for each individual data point in your, in your graph. x bar is the average of all the x's. And y bar is the average of the y variable. So that's mathematically the formula to calculate covariance. What it's uh, capturing is for a positive covariance, when x is above its average, so when x minus the average is positive, y is more likely to be above its average. For a negative covariance, when x is above its average, it's more likely that y will be below its average. Covariance relates to correlation through this relationship. So rho xy is the correlation between uh, the variables x and y, and that equals the covariance between x and y divided by the standard deviation of x and the standard deviation of y. Both of these uh, both covariance and correlation are attempting to measure how two variables relate to each other. The, the big difference between covariance and correlation is that covariance has information on the, the size of the relationship. So when x minus x bar is really big, um, we expect uh, y minus y bar to also be big um, for any given correlation. That information is thrown away in uh, when we use correlation because we're dividing by the standard deviations. So let me give you an example. Suppose that for this positive correlation, for any given x, we double the y. So for this data point, we just double the y. Same with this guy, same with that. Okay, so now we want to compare the covariance of these red dots to the covariance of the blue dots. So the covariance of the red dots is going to be the covariance between x 
and 2y because we just multiplied um, all the blue dots by 2 in the, the y dimension. So what this is going to look like mathematically But because we've multiplied all these terms by 2, this 2 captures the, um, the doubling of the y minus y bar. Because now the average y is going to be twice as large, and all the individual y's are twice as large. And then we have to divide by n minus 1 because there's no new data points. As you can see, this component right here is the exact same as up here. The only thing that's different is we multiplied by 2. So the covariance of this is equal to 2 times the covariance of regular x and y. So covariance is capturing something about the magnitude of the relationship. When we use correlation, though, the correlation throws away that magnitude information. So the correlation of x and y when we've just doubled y is going to be 2 times the covariance of xy. That's what we just figured out right there. And then we divide it by the standard deviation of x, which is unchanged. But now since we doubled the magnitude of y, the standard deviation is going to double. What you'll notice here is these twos cancel out. So the correlation between x and y and x and 2y is the exact same, but the covariance is going to be twice as large. So the takeaway here is correlation throws away all the magnitude information, but covariance keeps it around. It's easier to talk about correlations because correlations do not have units. Uh, covariances, on the other hand, they do have units. So with the covariance formula, if we're talking about returns, this is going to be a return, and this is going to be a return. And the units of covariance in this case are going to be returns squared. This is sort of like the units on variance, which are returns squared. Correlations, on the other hand, are going to be unitless because this covariance right here that has units of return squared but then we're dividing by a quantity that also has units of return squared those uh, that denominator of return squared comes from the unit on standard deviation being returns and the unit on this standard deviation also being returns so it's easier to talk about correlations because it is unitless. But at the end of the day, what we really care about is covariance because that has more information than correlation.